Hello and welcome to Kimboshi Radio, where Nick, we have all sorts of goings on. Yeah, we have a, a real surprise streak since the last time we, we spoke. With it's ta- Oops, yeah. sorry. Oh no, no, I mean we're both just excited. It's whatever, like Takeru Fuji. So I mean we expected him to be good. I was even talking last time, I was like, oh everybody, keep keep an eye out for him. It's gonna be exciting. And then like exciting no he's runs off 11 wins and is leading the tournament but uh yeah uh spoiler warning i guess i should have done that earlier <laughs> yeah as of thursday at you know 7 45 central time so we haven't even seen the actual match for today yeah um, he has 11 wins and he hoshori oh, was finally the first person who can put a stop to him yeah and like not surprising, you know what I mean? Like, we, we saw this from Ono Sato last time, and, and both were kind of keeping an eye out, because we're like, okay, this is, he's too talented to be this low. We've seen this repeatedly uh, in the last few, Basho Ono Sato, Haku Oho, Atami Fuji, these guys coming up for, who, for the tournament that they're ranked at, like, Maegashira 17, are going to blow people away. Um, so, honestly, kind of felt the same thing here, but... When I was talking about Takeru Fuji, I was not expecting this at all because I think he's a little bit of a one-dimensional wrestler in this physicality, but it has not mattered. And the big shock for me came when he beat on day 11, Kotono Waka to go 11-0 because that's where I thought, like, otherwise he'd fought a lot of these, you know, journeyman lower guys in the same ranked position as him. And then he beat Kotono Waka, and I was like, whoa, can he do it? Um, but now Hoshoryu has kind of stopped him. So how are you feeling about Takeru Fuji's Yusho chances now? Uh, I mean, at this point, with where the scores lie, uh, it's it's definitely in his favor. Um, he only has to pick up really one, one or two. One to uh, force a playoff if the rest can pick and win the rest of their matches. And if he gets two, which could easily happen at this point with how he's been going, he wins, which is, I think, the first time in, oh, shoot, I want to say it was either this. It's been a significant amount of time since somebody's come through in their first Basho and won. Yeah, well, because we talked about it with Hakuoho and with, like, well, those three names that I named or whatever when they were all doing well. It's it's like 100 years like and change, like 113. I'm making that up. Someone fact check me. But yeah, it's it's been a very long time. Because it keeps, we keep like hinting at it here and it just never quite happens. Um, but like you said, I, it's, it's kind of just math in this one at this point. Um, I love the way you framed that. Cause in my, I was like, well, no, all these three lost guys, they can totally catch him. But yeah, it's like he needs one win to force a playoff. And if he gets two out of his last three, it's over. No one else can get to 13. Right now, the picture that we're looking at is Takeru Fuji. Maegashira 17 is at 11 and 1. And then behind him are two Ozekis, Hoshoryu and Kotonawaka, both at 9 and 3. And he's already fought them, so that that's done. And then two rank and filers, the Maegashira 5, uh, Ono Sato, and the Maegashira 6, Gonoyama, shockingly, like, popping his head up into the picture here late. But, uh... Uh, Takeru Fuji has also already beaten Ono Sato. So for his final three matches, all they have left is one championship contender, and it's the lowest ranked challenger to Takeru Fuji. They could and probably more likely will match him up against the remaining, like, Sanyakus, but it's been kind of a dip back for Sanyaku. Like, does that mean that Takakesho is the one who stands the best chance of stopping him? Uh, I think so. Kirishima has not been in a great headspace, so I don't think that he could stop Takara Fuji now. I think Takara yeah. Keisho is really your 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 next best. Uh, he fights Wakamoto Haru tomorrow, but Wakamoto Haru has had like a bit of a mixed performance or, this time. Or like fought, fought him today, or Takara Keisho. Oh no, uh, sorry, you mean Takara Fuji. Sorry, sorry. Oh yeah, sorry. Takara Fuji has to fight Wakamoto Haru tomorrow, and it's been... Uh, kind of a mixed run for him. Like he could stop him. He's also very physically strong. Mm-hmm. He's he's more technical, so he might be able to pull that off. But you know, That's those a- two are really who are now seven and five are kind of the only stops to him. 
that's a great point on Wakamoto Haru because he Wakamoto Haru was the comp I would use for Takeda Fuji before he got up because of that closing ranks, violent physicality and stuff like that. I really felt like um, that was what he reminded me of. And I love what you said, like whether Wakamoto Haru has developed this later in his career. Again, he's 30. Um, but like Wakamoto Haru can fight on a Mawashi. And personally, I don't really know if Takeru Fuji can fight technically on a Mawashi simply because his plan A has been so good that he hasn't had to use his plan B a ton. Now, he did use it against Kotonowaka, so maybe. But yeah, walk me through. How do you feel about that match? Like, will one of them physically overpower the other? Will it become a technical match? If it becomes a technical match, do the mans with the largest lats we've ever seen uh, overcome? Before he beat Kota Nowaka, I would have said for sh- that Wakamoto Haru had the edge because if you can, you know, it's, it's like we've seen it before, if you can stop them physically where they kind of collapse, but he does have technique and they don't have a way to prepare for it because they haven't really seen it. So I do yeah. think that also gives Takeru Fuji an edge. So even that, yeah, wow. No, this is so fascinating that like just that the way the tournament has shaken out with like, again, Takakesho lost three in a row now i think the fatigue and the injury are really it's such a bummer he was seven and two he was looking great he was still a contender for the u show and now it's kind of falling apart but like he's not healthy he just needs that eighth win and he won't he won't do it he'll finish the tournament at this point and there's probably no difference uh doing that or not but like i just want him to get one more win and then drop out again you know like i would have rather he got that last win three days ago and then dropped out exactly like he can't risk losing his status as by far the senior Ozeki, but it and his hasn't been a, a terrible comeback considering the injury, the extent of the injuries. Yeah. But it's still, like you said, now wearing deep into the tournament, it's clearly wearing on him. And I would love for him to just dip out a couple days early. Same. And then, like, um, Kirishima, you mentioned the headspace thing. Uh, I know you were talking to me about they're closing his stable and things are moving around and he's probably, he's, I mean, he's going to be fine. Every stable would want him. And it sounds like you were telling me he's going to go to Kakuryu's stable, which I think is a great fit. Um, but I, I don't know what else to say besides he looks mental. I, it, it's a disaster. This boss show. Yes, it has really worn on. And I get it. Like this is where he's been essentially his entire like adult life, but hopefully he can bounce back fairly quickly. I would hope. Yeah, he. I mean, he should, right? And then Teruno Fuji, obviously, we're both frustrated. It wasn't healthy. We'll we'll talk more about that in the um, Basho review show. Um, but yeah, this is just yet another thing. He came back, and we didn't really want him to come back if he wasn't healthy, and he wasn't healthy, and he came back, and blah blah blah. So it's it's really changed the makeup of this tournament, and kind of left a lot of oxygen for someone like Takeru Fuji, like with Kirishima fading the way he did out of nowhere. Takakesho still not healthy. Um, but it's just shocking now they're both still in the running and Hoshodu has beaten Takeru Fuji, but like, you know, you really would have expected this to be a show for either Hoshodu or Kotonowaka. Um, it still can be, uh, but I, I mean, the numbers are in Takeru Fuji's favor. I, is there anyone besides those three that you think is in this? Like, personally, I'm off on Ono Sato here. Not, I, I still love the guy, but just like, when he lost today to Kotonowaka, I know that's a really tough fight, um, but he needed that because he knew, he, he, I, not like, it, it, he knew the chance was there to only be one win shy of Takeru Fuji uh, if, if Takeru Fuji lost and he won and he didn't get it done. Uh, well, I think realistically we can cross Gonoyama out. Um, yeah. He's done well, but he's not, he's not going to be like a, a champion contender at this point. Um yeah. Yeah, and I think it's hard because if Ono Sato, if Takeru Fuji had not been here and you looked at Ono Sato's performance, you'd be like, okay, great. He's doing well. He's climbing. He's really like, he's keeping the steam going. But then I mean, it's so awesome hard when you have somebody side by yeah. side to compare yeah. him with who's doing so extremely well. Right. Nine, nine and three at M5 in your second ever tournament. Like, Ono Sato's doing great. And and he beat Takakesho. He's beaten an Ozeki. That was his first time beating an Ozeki. He beat Wakamoto Haru, a Sekiwake. He's doing good. It's just, yeah, when you have somebody who's just so, so well and so strong in this, it's it really, I don't think he'll catch up. Like you said, I think mm-hmm. at this point, 
he'll lose to some of the upper Sanyaku, but that's that's what we should expect from somebody on their second round. Yeah. Yeah, he's got Daisho tomorrow, and Daisho, again, is having a bad Basho, but, like, Daisho's now there with his back against the wall. He's 5-7, and seven, so, like, he needs three straight wins. That's going to be very motivated, and we both think is very good, so. And I feel like we've seen him pull this out before, this exact scenario. Yeah, grind it out. Um, so, I mean, let's, let's, we'll, we'll get out of here real quick. Cause this is just a quick, uh, check in and final hype show. But what, what do you think is, well, I guess, I don't know. Do you want to talk about what do you think's most likely and what do you want to happen? If, if we both think that Onosato and Gonoyama are going to fade. So you've got Takeru Fuji, Hoshoryu and Kotonowaka. What do you think's going to happen and what do you want to happen? So, what I think is going to happen is basically going from what we've seen in the past, which clearly has failed me this time because all of my predictions were wrong. Um, Hoshoryu typically kind of dips out in these last few days. Like he'll get, like he'll get another win for sure. But I think it really rides on Kota Nowaka, who, by the way, has done extremely well for his first Ozeki run, which is definitely breaking a trend there. Um, I think it's really up to him. He's at this point to stop. Uh, Takeru Fuji, if they can force a playoff, yeah, simply because uh, Kotono Waka has already fought uh, against um, Takeru Fuji. Yes, and I yeah. ideally I would he would see that and he wouldn't lose twice in this short a time. Yeah, I, another interesting piece of information though. So um, they have both already fought Takeru Fuji, but Hoshoryu and Kotono Waka have not fought each other yet. And in their last, uh, I don't just off the top of my head, I don't entirely remember, but I believe Hoshoryu is 0 and 3 in the last three matches between Kotonowaka and him, which is like one of those things where I think I agree with you, except that I think Kotonowaka's gonna, I think Kotonowaka is gonna clinch it for Takeru Fuji. You know, I think when. Hoshoryu, I bet he goes two and one, and his loss is against Kotonowaka, which means that knocks him out. Yes, it's always funny when you see them at the top; like they're the ones who stop each other from winning, yeah. which just frees the way for some like a a rogue Megashira. Yeah, <laughs> Megashira, it's a Florida man. <laughs> um, yeah, I. Either way. There's a ton of excitement still left in this. If Hoshoryu, I mean, it's it's not like Hoshoryu's never beaten Kota Nawaka. It's just that recent history over a year or so. So, um, like Hoshoryu could still do it. Kota Nawaka though could run things off. Um, I any of these five guys challenging uh, for the win right now, I would be stoked to see any of them do it. Just the bizarre nature of it with Gonoyama or Takeru Fuji or uh, Kotonowaka Hoshoryu starting the Yokozuna runs that we both desperately want or Ono Sato if he somehow manages to start this story that we think is going to be filled with glory. Um, ha ha ha, it's a rhyme. Um, but... Uh, is is there anything else that you're looking for in, or like i mean if takeru fuji does do it what what do you think is the story for this guy because personally i think ono zato's future is way brighter than takeru fuji i think from a point of desperation like he kind of needs this one if you've put yourself this close we've seen with takayasu if you don't get it done you might never get it done no that's true and I do think there's like a good like glimmer of hope for him long term with the fact that he did beat Coach Nawaka. You know, he t- he was able to beat Abi. Good point. But you, that's you're way smarter than me on that one. That's a good point. Beating Coach Nawaka at, at this point in his career that matters. That should be a sign of high performances to come. Yeah, assuming like he can keep it up, which we've obviously seen tons. Well, not to this level, but we've seen a lot of like really hot newcomers come in and then drop it on like their second or third round. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll have to see. Uh, but I think you've swayed me. I think like with the numbers and then seeing that Kotonowaka and Hoshoryu still haven't fought each other. I think Takeru Fuji is going to get this done. Amiga Shira 17 in his debut tournament. It's going to be crazy exciting to watch either way. So thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, of those five, who who are we shortchanging um, versus are you guys also on the Takeru Fuji steam train? Because that boy, uh, man, he hits like a ton of bricks. 
All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon.